Hey, it's Dominic here, and today I'm gonna to run you through how to do a very simple but effective website footer in Webflow. I'm gonna assume that you've already got your basic website set up in terms of a menu, perhaps a header area, and then a secondary area here. So the first step that we're gonna do is jump across to our add elements area and click the button and we're going to drop in a section. Now Webflow does actually have some inbuilt layouts now but we're going to do this from scratch. So we're going to drop a section in right down the bottom of our website here and I'm going to jump straight across to the right hand side, click the cog and I'm going to change the tag to footer straight away that way we've already sorted that out. The second step that I'm going to do is come across to the paintbrush and I'm going to call this footer and give that a class of footer. And I am immediately going to add in a padding at the top of 60 and a padding at the bottom of 60. And I'm going to give this some styling straight away as well. So we've sort of got a bit of a, a light theme in our quick mock-up going on. So I'm going to make this footer a little bit darker. So I'm going to give it a color of 2 to 2, which is a really dark gray. And then I want everything inside it to be white as well. So when I do start to add some font and some color in, it's going to be white. The next step is to add a container in and sometimes you might like to add a, a div block in and style that but for the, the time being we're just going to add a container. The container uh, as the little tooltip says it's just a, a safe space essentially that, that means it's going to be contained on the bigger screens and make sure that it fits the full width on the smaller screens as well. The next step we're going to do is add in some columns. So in this footer example, we're going to do a pretty common footer theme that we do at Dominate Designs, and that's going to be the four column one. I can show you a little tool tip in another video about how to do this with flex boxes, but to make things as simple as possible, we're just going to use columns for now. The next step I'm going to do is actually drop a div block into this column, and I'll explain this shortly. Then we're not gonna give that a class, we can just leave that as is. And then the first thing we're gonna do is, is uh, drop a heading in. And we're gonna make this one a heading five because let's imagine we've already used some headings uh, throughout the website. You can see that I've actually already styled up a heading five just for a previous example. So what I'm gonna do is come over to the right hand side, click in our class selector, and then click this purple heading five. I'm gonna strip everything out quickly so we can start from scratch. You will notice one of the first things is that because we set the color of the text in our footer to white, you notice that uh, by default, it's already picked this up for our heading five, but we're gonna give it just a font of Oswald. Gonna maybe give it a, a size of 1.4 AM and a line height of 1.2 AM just to give it a little bit of breathing space. And then we're gonna leave it on capitalized as well. This is always a good area for where I put the business name. Um, that's either some text or a logo. And then what I'll often do is just drop in a paragraph block so we can click and drag from the elements panel, drop in a paragraph block. And this is a, a really good area where I often add just a, the one statement overview of the business as well. And often find this is just a, a good reiteration from an SEO and a usability point of view that this is what the person um, is on the website to view. It's also a really great place to add, say, an ABN. And uh, what I'll also do is add some social media links in there as well, and I'll get to that shortly. The reason that we added the div block in is because everything that we've dropped in is, is inside this div block, and it means that we can easily quickly copy and then paste just using Command or Control C and, and then Command or Control V. And we've sort of got everything wrapped in together. What I'll often do over here in this heading is this second column will be a main menu and then to create this what I'll do is click and grab a list block a list item and so what I'll often do is grab a list block and drop and drag that in there and then I'll remove the bullets out of this one as well and then you can see we've got our individual list items here as well and inside one of those I'm gonna drop and drag a link block now, what you need to just make sure is that we're actually dropping this link block inside the list item itself. So you notice before it sort of tried to drag it uh, up and above or inside just the list itself. But for this instance, we want to make sure that it's sitting within the list item. And another way you can achieve this is by clicking on the list item first, then coming across to this, the elements area and then clicking the text link from there. You notice that uh, this has come across in the default blue color. So what I'm gonna do is click on it, 
gonna call this one footer link. Just fix the little glitch here and type in red and then change it to white. And in this instance, I'm actually gonna make this just a smaller version of our header text as well. So we can leave it as normal as opposed to bold. And there's that set up as well. One of the other things that I already set up was by clicking on the list item itself. So again, not the list, but the list item coming up to the top and then clicking all list items and just giving it a little bit of padding there too. So I'm actually gonna make that 15 now. The benefit of doing this in the list item is I can delete out these other two. I'm gonna copy. I've been just paste this a few times here. So as you can see, we're rapidly building this menu. And here is the place where I can type in and go homepage about our services. Acquire now in contact. I'm just making this up. And there's our menu straight away. Again, because this is all wrapped in a div block, what we can do is copy and paste this. And for this one, this, this block here can often changes, but in this instance, we'll make it our services. Traditionally, if the services are set up through Webflow's content management system, what you can do is drop in this collection list, style it up in a similar way that we've done here, and, and then link that to the services that are on the website. Just for this example, I'm going to imagine we're a carpet cleaning or a renovation, a jack of all trades sort of um, business. So that's going to be our business name. And this is where we can actually list the services carpet cleaning in Tasmania. And we can work through these. Uh, and there's our sort of three services that we've got there as well. And, and what we can actually do is if this was set up as a content management system item, we can add just a small preview under both as well that way visitors to the website are also getting a, a little preview and then they can click on the link as well and, and with this we might actually like to just add a little bit of breathing space there and the way that I did that was just by um, changing the display to the block element and then making it full width. You did notice that it changed the footer item over here, the footer link, because these are the same class. So what we can actually do is just change our list item back to 10. So I'm not doing things perfectly, but what it, the Webflow offers you the benefit of doing is jumping back and forth and tweaking things as need be. So the next one, I'm gonna copy this div block and copy it across. And this one here is, is often always the contact area. Here is just a general overview of uh, contacting. So this can be info at jack of all trades com.au you might have a phone number here and then we could also have the social media links over this side as well um, what I'll often also do is grab a link to the contact page again here that way people can follow up with more and just for a consistency point of view you might like to link that the other thing that I forgot to mention before was how to actually link these links to a page if you are new to Webflow what you can do is click on the link Come over to the cog. We don't have any new pages set up at the moment, but you can click on the page icon here and then assign that to a certain page. So once you've set up your other pages over here via the pages area, you can then click and link to those as well. Or if you've got an external link, you can copy and paste that in there and, and open that up in a new tab as well. So there's a, a pretty basic footer. Um, personally, I often like to have things as even as possible. So when a logo sits in there, it might push that down a little bit more, which is nice. So we might actually decide to move out these descriptions or another strategy I'll often use is, um, is making this text in the footer just that little bit smaller as well. So if I make this something like a 1 EM or 0.9, we obviously want it to be as legible as possible, but sometimes just by keeping that a little bit smaller and a little bit tighter. And again, I'm just playing around with whatever I think looks the best. And what we can do is just copy and paste that into here because I'm trying to work as quickly as possible. And that sort of reduces the, the amount there as well. One of the other things we can do is actually drop in a div block inside this container. And probably this is one of the more difficult things inside of Webflow is thankfully when I drop it in here, it's gonna start to try and put it up the top as you can see, whereas we want this down the bottom. So. Again, if you're having a bit of difficulty or it wants to drop it inside an element, whereas what we want to do is drop it down the bottom of this container, what you can also do is exactly the same as what we did before. Click on this top level element and then come over to the right hand side, the left hand side, and then actually add in that item that you want. And that will always put it below 
the other item that's there. So I'm going to call this one copyright. Um, we're just going to bump it down by 15 pixels. We're going to make this centered because this is going to be uh, where we get the copyright information. Copy and paste that in there. You notice that because we made the div block centered, the text automatically goes centered here. We can call this copyright jack of all trades 2022. And we can also add some sublinks in here in terms of uh, if there's sort of no room up here, or we might add a privacy policy link in here if it's something that is important for this website. Or alternatively, we can add it down here, for example. And then if we did want to make a link of that, what we can do is uh, hover over it, select the link button, assign it to where you want it to go, probably our privacy policy page, and then just give it a class and style that up as well. So uh, we can call this copy, right link. And then again, just use our little trick to go red to white. And there it is styled there. That's, that's a really simple overview. And again, apart from creating those individual links, um, we've come away with quite an attractive and professional looking footer.